What's up guys? So this is the video you've been looking for as far as how to swap a 150cc motor into a 50cc scooter including the wiring, the realistic stuff you're going to have to put up with besides just welding a, an engine mount. So the most obvious one probably you saw is make this engine mount. So I just have a, a square bar or tube, sorry, coming down. I cut off the old ears, the old mounts that used to be down here. There's a bar, you'll see it running across that the old one hooks up to. Chop those off and hood them, put them here. The only downside to this, it's a hard mount. So there's gonna be a lot of vibrations. This is that piece you cut the ears off of. And if you look, there's a rubber mount here, there's a rubber mount here, and a rubber mount here. So when you do this, there's gonna be a lot of vibrations in the handles, screws coming undone. So if I could go back, I would just, I would cut them off. I'd weld them back onto here, just spaced out correctly for the new mount, right? The new mounting points, because I believe they're uh, a little wider. I don't remember, they're a little off. But, and then I would take this bar and find a way to weld that to here. Um, and then just bolt like make little, make little mounting tabs or mounting ears, weld the ears to the frame, and then drill holes in those ears and bolt this. That way you can have a nice smooth ride. The other thing you're gonna have to do is swap the axle or the drive shaft or order one. I tried swapping the one, the original one, original one from the old motor. You see how short it is, but it does not work. It's it's not the same. So don't waste your time either make a spacer or order the correct one. All right, back on the scooter. Once you do that, the wheel right here is gonna be rubbing up against the housing. So you're gonna have to build a spacer. I took a washer, I'll see if I can attach the photo, but I took a washer uh, that I think is a AJC was the code, but it's the biggest one you can find at Home Depot that actually slid over the splines. And then I took an angle grinder I marked it, I marked the washer, just like that inner sliver. So I took it pretty much from that thick to that thin using an angle grinder enough to where it'll fit inside. And you'll see it when the wheel's off. Then this is a, uh, what is this? A three quarter inch uh, tube fitting or galvanized pipe fitting. And it's two inches long. Once you do that, the whole bike's going to be low, so you either need to get a longer shock or I saw another video where somebody cut this off and rotated the mount to face like at a 90 or parallel to the ground. I didn't do either one of those. I just built this little extension using this, this square pipe. So that pipe, this is the same stuff I used to make that engine mount. Uh, it's the biggest square tubing you can find in Saga Home Depot and it's about four foot and I want to say it was somewhere around either somewhere around $17 for the piece but I cut off the ears I'll see if I can attach some photos to this one but cut off some ears I bent them in to where they'd fit inside the bracket I drilled some holes and then I welded it and then I grinded it down so it's pretty much a tube going into uh, a smaller tube the bottom one I didn't do anything to, I just drilled a hole through it and then I have a spacer on the inside that I made. Or I took a nut that fit over this bolt and I cut it to the thickness to where there's no play left or right um, from the head of the shock. This is stock mount. Uh, back to the carb. Make sure when you make this mount there's enough room for your intake uh, for the opening in the carb. If not, you're going to have a hard time with it. The throttle cable from the 50cc scooter is not going to be long enough. It's either replace the throttle cable or all I did was swap that bracket. You see the brass bracket, how originally it's connected by two uh, screws. I just loosened one up, took it off, and moved it over sideways like that, and now it works. All right, the wiring. I took the spark plug wire and the ignition coil 
I replaced that with the one that came with the motor. They're identical. You can keep your old one if you want. The wiring hooks up exactly the same. The... Okay, the stator wiring, these ones right here, you're gonna have red, or sorry, yeah, red, white, yellow, green, and the blue and white wire. Those are gonna hook up to where your old stator was hooked up. So white goes to white, yellow goes to yellow, green goes to green. The blue and white, the blue with a white stripe hooks up to the white with a red stripe, all right, and then the solid red from the stator or the motor hooks up to the, the red with a black stripe. All right. Okay, from here it's gonna go to the CDI. So this red with a black stripe is going to be on the CDI right here. This one. All right. The white with the red stripe or correction, the red with the white stripe is going to go down to that bottom left one. It looks pink, it's kind of worn out, but that bottom right of the screen. Alright, so that's your CDI. Alright, now you're not done yet. This is the piece that took me a while to figure out. I would... I kept the original uh, voltage rectifier and it did not work. Repeat, it did not work. This one is four wires, the original one. Uh, yellow, red, green, and white. All right. The new one that's going to come with a 150 is going to have five wires. It's going to be green, pink, black, yellow, and red. So you can. I I cut the harness. Here's where the old harness was. These are the old set four that went to the voltage regulator before. Green goes to green. Nothing new. Yellow goes to yellow, nothing new. The white is going to be pink on the new rectifier. So the white hooks up to the pink. The red hooks up to the red. And what's that? I think that it only leaves one. But this black one, it's a key switch. This is the black one from the rectifier, the new rectifier. That one's gonna hook up to a key switch, AKA something that gets power when you turn the key on. Mine is not hooked up to run with a key, but this is where I hooked it up to. This is that that switch, or that plug that goes to your ignition switch, AKA the thing that your key is hooked up to, All right? Green's gonna be ground. I didn't look into the other two, but the red. The red's the one I want. I know that one's 12 volt. In short, this rectifier monitors uses that black wire to monitor the voltage and then it adjusts the output of the rectifier to meet the system's needs. So this one I hooked up to the red wire that goes to the key. Again, I don't have a key, so I just cut it and hooked it straight up. Had I been using my key, I would have just tapped into it. So this one would still be connected here, All right? I'll just tap into it. Now my lights work. Before my lights weren't working and it kept popping this fuse, right? None of the lights work. It kept popping this fuse. Uh, now it works. So those are the the main points. This is day three of troubleshooting. I don't know. If I go back, I'll just get a big bore kit and call it a day. Oh, I forgot. Exhaust. Oh, could I forget the exhaust? Okay, so exhaust. The same exhaust. Uh, the fitting is the same. But the, the entire exhaust, I had the factory exhaust. I had the factory exhaust and it did not fit. I had to cut off the muffler. And then I had to cut off this little emissions thing. Uh, I forget, it's the, there's a little square rectangular box with the hose going to the other side. I got rid of that, so all I did was cut it off, put a bolt, and weld the bolt. Uh, when I did all that, the exhaust sits really, really low. You'll be scraping on the ground, so I, uh, I shortened it up weld right there I put an extension like I used a one inch ex extension to bring it out more and then I cut it here so I can angle it down so I angled the whole thing down because before it would interfere with that part of the motor so uh, this is what I don't know if this is important but T10 
2020. Long story short, GY6 150cc. Uh, that's the motor I have, but I had to modify this. Only thing I'm missing now is an exhaust gasket, uh, and then it should be good to go. So that is it. Hope it helped. And if you got any questions, just leave it in the comment, and I'll try to answer it for you. And the fuse is, I think I mentioned it already, 15 amp. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a little startup. That is it. The uh, lights are gonna flicker on mine because my battery is dead. Like my battery does not work at all. But that's it, hope it helped. Okay, have a nice one. Okay, two quick minor things I missed when I built this bracket. I took the square tube and I had to build these little extensions. The same thickness as the tube itself. That's it, right? That's between the bar and those ears. And the second thing, the auto choke, this thing right here on the carb. It's the same exact wiring as before, right? I just didn't cover it, but this is the new one. It comes and it plugs into the same plug as before. Other than that, everything else was covered.